What's going on, everyone? I wanted to share with you uh, my takeaways from a program called Accomplishment Coaching. So about three years ago, I graduated from Accomplishment Coaching, which is a one-year ontological coaching program. We actually have our three-year reunion coming up this weekend on Saturday. So super excited for that. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to share with you some of my takeaways that I've gotten from uh, Accomplishment Coaching. So uh, just to give you some more context, so it's a leadership development program designed to, to, the first portion is to have awareness around who we're being. So uh, one of the exercises I did was to go around and, and ask people when Davidson walks into a room, uh, what does he bring with him? So we're asserting that everyone has a certain aura. So you know how, um, you know, there's certain people who light up the room or there's certain people who walk into the room. So essentially the first part is to have awareness of who we're being in a certain way. So, you know, if we're, if I was pulled over by a cop, who I'm being with the cop would be like, you know, very like proper, uh, be able to speak to them in a very uh, well-mannered way. So there's certain ways I'm being, and it depends on the situation I'm in and, and where I'm at. So at work, I'm being a certain way. Like nowadays, in, in this year, I'm being like focused. Um, you know, I'm being like very uh, paying attention to my computer and, and prospecting and sending out emails, right? And in certain areas, like when I'm in the cafeteria, I'm more being um, receptive to saying hi to everyone and, and you know, being more social. So anyways, so what I learned from doing that exercise is that my being is heart, optimism, brilliance, compassion, and partner. Uh, this is after gathering, talking to people who I'm close to, like my girlfriend, my best friends, uh, Davis, I think I talked to my sister, people who, who uh, I would say, you know, know me or have, or have known me for a while. Um, and the second portion of the program, it's called the survival mechanism. So it's, it's the stuff that has happened to us in the past that has created who we are. So like a way of surviving the world. It's not a good or bad. It's just a way of being uh, that we fall back on um, either when we're triggered or just when things happen. So my survival mechanism is big hero no, which means um, I make people wrong. And it, it's sort of like an oxymoron where it's like I can be very empowering and doing cool things like this and, and, and helping and inspiring others. Or I could also be very disempowering. Um, so, for instance, like there are certain ways I'm being with certain people who, who rub me the wrong way where I'm like, nah, dude, like you can't you can't do that. Like that's totally not in the cards for you which is kind of ironic, but it's just a way of, of um, things like insecurities of myself and who I'm being that uh, I'm seeing in others as well. So having that awareness is extremely powerful and I can see it seep through all areas of my life. And we all have different survival mechanisms. So yours could be completely different than mine, but I'm just sharing with you mine so that I can give you an idea of some of the awareness and some of the practices I've, take, I've taken on despite the fear, despite the survival mechanism. So one of the areas I've taken on um, during Big Hero No is, um, well, first acknowledge the fact that I've been disempowering, um, whether it's whoever it is in the past where I've, I've wronged, uh, specifically my girlfriend. Um, the next survival mechanism is optimistic orphan. So it's a way I've noticed it's a way of like overcompensating by being overly optimistic of a way of like kind of downplaying like how bad a situation is. And some of you may say like, well, that's a good thing. Yes, I think it's a good thing, but I think within reason, right? You have to be realistic sometimes and it's good to look at the data. So for me, for instance, if my finances aren't in alignment with my goals, I can't just be like, well, you know, this year I'm going to blow it out of the water and make like 300 K. Right. You, you have to be somewhat gradual, right. You can't just be like double your income in like a matter of like six months. Right. So that's something I've noticed that has probably been like one of the biggest survival mechanisms that have I've noticed. 
Um, and yeah, I think sometimes it does serve me, right? Because sometimes it, it gives me um, optimism knowing that I can do all these amazing things like in 2020, going to build schools in Africa, you know, also hitting my number and, um, you know, volunteering for all these amazing nonprofits that I'm involved with. Um, so yeah, that's something that I've, I've, I've uh, respected and something that has helped me out a lot. And the third thing is, oh, and, and the, uh, the orphan part is interesting. So the orphan part, I would say is like the biggest realization where I was trying to be all independent and essentially um, I prided myself on being independent. It's like, oh, you know, like I, I didn't, I didn't have a father growing up. Right. So then I used it as like a crutch almost. Uh, and, but then it also helped me realize that I wasn't able to relate to a lot of people who has had a father in their life, which is like the majority of the world. Right. Um, but then you also notice that there's a lot of people that have gone through like divorces as well. So it's, it's, who am I to judge like which way is better or worse, right? So the third one is, um, so big hero, no optimistic orphan. Oh, judgmental guru. Oh man, this one is, is a tough one. So it's cool because like being a judgmental a guru is cool because I get to do things like this or I'm like, this is awesome. But in, at the end of the day, it's just an opinion, right? You don't have to listen to what I say and what I say might resonate with you. It might not. But at the end of the day, it's just an opinion. Um, and I, I think I got this one because I listened to Lewis Howes and like Gary Vaynerchuk and all these like, you know, millionaires and billionaires. And um, yeah, that's why I've read, you know, Bill Clinton's biography, Obama's biography, right? Because in my mind, that's the idea of success, right? Whether it's having influence having a company like Microsoft, you know, Satya Nadella's biography was amazing. But to my point, it's just an opinion. It doesn't necessarily mean that's the best way to be, right? I'm sure there's a lot of people that have found fulfillment in being the best uh, wife or husband, or in my, my case, like being the best girlfriend, right? Sammy's such an incredible girlfriend. And who am I to say that, you know, having business success, um, you know, whether that looks like making billions of dollars is much better, right? It's just one opinion. But anyways, it's helped me. I would, I'm thankful for it because it's helped me and it's led me to do all these cool things like now I'm making videos, right? Which I find a lot of joy and fulfillment in. And I'll, I love getting feedback saying like, oh, thank you. You've helped me want to create my own YouTube channel. So thanks for all that, guys. But um, yeah, anyways, so those are the things I've taken away from accomplishment coaching. Um, I'm going to share with you what I've taken away from this weekend's observation on Saturday. Would love for any of you who wants to attend, feel free to shoot me a ping. Would love, I'll send you an invite. I'll throw it on your calendar. And yeah, hope everyone has the most amazing day ahead of them. Take care.